Hi everyone, welcome back to our Writing Reproducible Papers in R tutorial series. Uh, this is going to be the second video on doing statistics in R. Uh, we previously, previously just did t-tests and now we're going to do uh, ANOVAs uh, and linear regression. They're very similar. So, okay, so we left off here at two sample t-tests, at the independent samples t-test, and we're going to move on uh, from there into ANOVA. So let's get rid of this block because we don't need it right now. Uh, and let's look at ANOVA, right? So ANOVA, uh, we can look at pedal area or pedal length, some continuous outcome variable um, with predictors that are categorical and we can have more than two of them, right? So the freedom of an ANOVA is that it's like a t-test, but we can do multiple comparisons across different uh, levels of some predictor variable. So here we have species, and species has three uh, statuses, right? You have Setosa, you have Versicolor, and you have Virginica. So you have three levels of, of species, and you have an outcome. So here we are doing the outcome of petal area. So we can look at uh, petal area and if species can accurately predict petal area. So the way you use ANOVA is by using the AOV function. So analysis of variance, AOV. So AOV, open parentheses, and then the first thing you want to do is uh, your outcome variable. So pedal.area, and this comes straight from our data frame, pedal.area. And then you use the tilde to show what is predicting your outcome. So uh, in regression, we would say y is regressed on x. Uh, here you can say pedal area is being predicted by species. So pedal.area, space, tilde, species. Now remember the capital S is important because it's a capital, oops, I just closed it. It's a capital S in our data frame. So make sure you have that capital S. If it's not capital, you'll get an error. And we'll talk about errors in a soon forthcoming video. Uh, and then you have to specify what data is being used for this ANOVA. So here, it's data equals iris. That's our iris data frame. So if we run that, oh, we get pedal underscore test not found. Why is it telling me that? I want, oh, I was in the wrong place. Here, I want this. Okay, so it ran, and if we hit summary, we get the summary output of our test right here. So we have our degrees of freedom. So remember, ANOVA, you record two degrees of freedom, your degrees of freedom within and your degrees of freedom between. So you have two degrees of freedom for species, 147 degrees of freedom as your residuals. You have your sums of square, your mean squares, your F value, which is one, uh, 683.1, and your P value. So again, P very, very, very small. Um, it gives you codes for significance, so you get three asterisks, which is very significant. Um, we can leave that to the critics. And from here, we can say, okay, so uh, species can predict pedal area. And now from here, you could even go one step further, and you can do Tukey HSD uh, first ANOVA, which is what we named our object. If we run that. This is gonna do our post hoc pairwise comparison. So we can say, okay, I know that species is predicting petal area, but I don't know which species have different petal area from which other species, right? So in order to do that, anytime you have more than two groups, you need to do some sort of post hoc test. Um, so you could do a Bonferroni adjustment, you can do a two keys HSD. Uh, let's do a two keys on a significant difference. And when we print that, we see that the Versicolor to Setosa, the difference in petal area is here, 5.3. So the adjusted p-value is zero. So that would say that the area of Versicolor is different from the area of Setosa. And it does that for each pair of species. So since we have three species, we need three comparisons, Versicolor to Setosa, Virginica to Setosa, and Virginica to Versicolor. And as you can see, those differences are all quite big, and the adjusted p-value is all zero, so less than 0.05. So we would say that uh, all three species have significantly different petal area compared to one another. So that's ANOVA. So 
pretty straightforward, pretty uh, as you would expect from other statistical programs like SPSS. Uh, so let's just move straight into linear regression, which is very similar. So we can do linear modeling. So I call it linear modeling because the function for it is LM. So you do LM, open parentheses, and then the formatting of your formula is going to be the exact same as it is for ANOVA. So here um, we have petal area regressed on species. So petal.area with the tilde and your predictor species data equals iris. And if we run that, we see that that goes. We have first underscore LM, first linear model. And if we run the summary of that, we get all the data for our linear model that we just ran. So here uh, we have our coefficients, we have our estimate, so this is beta, right? We have for the intercept is 0.36, for species versus color, it's 5.3. For species virginica, it's 10.93. Which means that your reference species is going to be setosa, right? It's the one that's not there. So this is very similar to SPSS output. Um, you also have your p-values, so which ones are significant predictors. Uh, okay. You have your model parameters here, so... Uh, your residual standard error, your multiple R squared, adjusted R squared, the F statistic, which is 683.1. Remember up here, your ANOVA, uh, if we run the summary for ANOVA, you get the same thing, right? Your F value is 683.1. Your P value is very, very, very small. Here it's very, very, very small. Uh, 147 residual, de uh, residual degrees of freedom. Um, and it should look very similar to the ANOVA because it is very similar to the ANOVA, except you're running it as a linear model and not as uh, a categorical variable predicting uh, a, a continuous variable in your outcome like an ANOVA. So, cool. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to bring up is uh, a couple of cooler ways to look at your outputs, right? So we've been using the summary function to look at your outputs. But what if we wanted to look at it a little tidier, a little nicer, a little more cleaned up? So that's where the broom package comes from. Remember that I said that I had installed a new package while we were gone in the last video called broom. So broom, I like broom so much I even have a sticker of it on my laptop. See, there's broom. It's backwards, but that's okay. So broom kind of cleans up what you're looking at in the summary function to something that's a lot easier to read. So if we go all the way back down, we can use the tidy function. So tidy and then the object of your linear model, so first LM, and that gives you this. So it gives you your intercept, your species versus color, your species virginica. These are your terms of your predictors in your linear model. It gives you the estimate, the standard error, the statistics, so this is a T statistic, and the P value. So very small, very small, very small. Um, cool. Now, if you wanted to look at the model parameters, we would use the function called glance. So glance first LM. And here you can say, see your R squared, your adjusted R squared, your sigma, your test statistic, which for this case is F, the P value for that, your constrained degrees of freedom, which is three. And then if you go further over here, you have your log likelihood, your AIC, your BIC, these are model fit parameters, uh, your deviance, and your residual degrees of freedom, 147. So 147 and your three constrained degrees gives you 150, which is our total size of N. So here we have both our, uh, our predictors using the tidy function, which is our species, and then we have our model parameters in glance. So if you use these functions without having the broom package installed, you're going to get errors. And R is just going to say, I don't know what you want me to do with this tidy function. I don't know what glance is. So if you install broom using install.packages, you can then use these functions to get your model output in a much more straightforward, clean way. Summary will always still work. You can just use summary again. Uh, and you can see the whole summary function um, of your linear model. So uh, that is ANOVAs and linear models and a little bit of Tukey post hoc uh, testing as well. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button for 
notifications of the next video. Um, follow me on Twitter at NickFoxStats, and I will see you next time. So, see you!